That's why we brought it. It's been almost a year and a half now since the election of Donald Trump, and the opposition Democrats still haven't moved on from the defeat of Hillary Clinton. Last week, the party filed a lawsuit in New York over the hacking and publishing of emails from the Democratic National Committee, the DNC, in 2016. The defendants in the suit are the Russian government, the Trump campaign, and WikiLeaks. The timing, with midterm elections about six months away, may well be political. But suing WikiLeaks, a news organization, for publishing leaked material when it is hardly the only news outlet to do so, could set a troubling precedent for press freedom in America. The U.S. media have remained strangely silent on the implications, busily obsessing over Russian meddling in the election, the Mueller investigation, and Donald Trump's own rhetorical war against the media. Reporters have been taking a pass on the DNC lawsuit story and the legal assault on the fourth estate that's coming from the other side of the aisle. Our starting point this week is Washington. Russia for a multi-million dollar so amount. Some have called this a political stunt by the DNC. This complaint alleges that the Trump campaign was essentially a racketeering enterprise. That's a pretty serious allegation. What does this do vis-a-vis -vis the Mueller investigation? In the coverage of this lawsuit, three of the four principals involved are getting most of the attention. The plaintiff, the DNC, which is the governing body of the Democratic Party, and two of the defendants, the Russian government and the Trump campaign. The fourth element, which operates on the margins of the fourth estate, is WikiLeaks. The DNC is suing WikiLeaks because they're, they're the central player. If it weren't for their platform, if it weren't for WikiLeaks essentially conspiring with Russian operatives, this wouldn't have been a story. And, and it, it wasn't just a platform. I mean, they marketed these emails. They were reaching out to the reporters. So you can't really, I don't think if you're the DNC, you know, file a lawsuit and, and ignore the role of WikiLeaks in all of this. The DNC has, instead of engaging in internal reforms and self-criticism, has doubled down and blamed WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks exposed that the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC conspired to prevent Bernie Sanders from actually having a fair shot in the primary, made sure that Hillary Clinton always was going to be the candidate. Could be president. And it's very clear that this is a concerted attempt by the DNC to blame multiple external actors for its own internal problems that led to its own loss in the 2016 presidential election. The core issue in this story is not what was in those hacked emails, the DNC's sabotaging of the Sanders campaign, its unseemly cap-in-hand approach to financial donors, but how those emails found their way into the media food chain in the first place. Cybersecurity specialists say the hackers who infiltrated the DNC's servers were Russian. Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have stuck to their policy of neither confirming nor denying who their sources are, saying only that the source is not the Russian government and it is not a state party. WikiLeaks acquired the files and started publishing the emails four months prior to the 2016 election. And it was not alone. No major U.S. media outlet ignored the story. It was, for better or worse, considered newsworthy. These were stolen conversations, and I don't think that journalists took proper care to, uh, to vet them. It's not that they weren't true, but the motive in releasing them in order to demonize the Democrats when there was no such comparable effort on the part of Republicans, that was not handled well. Journalists just rushed into print without considering the source, without considering what was behind them, without explaining it to their readers, and this had the effect of perverting the political discourse. The 2016 election was highly partisan. It was highly divisive. I think, too, that many in the mainstream media did not want to make it appear that they were ignoring information that was coming out of the DNC that might have an impact on how people chose to vote. Thousands of leaked emails show Democratic Party officials possibly plotting against Bernie Sanders. And I think for many of them, if they chose not to uh, reveal the salient points of the DNC emails, it would appear that they were trying to assist the Clinton campaign. Look, the context here is everyone, and I mean everyone, in the summer and fall of 2016 thought Hillary Clinton was going to win the election. So unfortunately for the press, there was a real animus towards Hillary Clinton. 
and I think they saw their role as how to make sure she kind of just stumbles across the finish line. How do we make this so it's not a triumphant historic victory? I don't think they understood the gravity of the situation. And absolutely, they did not ask the difficult questions. Why are we publishing stolen documents? However, the DNC, which has an ongoing relationship with papers like the New York Times and the news networks, has not taken legal issue with any of those organizations over their coverage of the story. The lawsuit targets the alleged source of the emails, the Russian government, and the middleman, WikiLeaks but it spares papers like the Times and other news outlets that took what WikiLeaks provided them and fed it to American voters. Most of the people who publish these things are media outlets that would have some First Amendment protection. And even if they don't, um, going after them might somehow compromise the First Amendment. Whereas WikiLeaks, they don't look anything like a media organization. They're not a newspaper. They're not even a website with reporters or anything like that, or editors. It's an organization that helps to steal information from people, sometimes governments, sometimes others, who they think are powerful and they happen to disagree with, and then publishes it. That's not press freedom to me. That's theft. The exact status of WikiLeaks is still subject to debate, discussion, and discovery. People in the intelligence community regard WikiLeaks as simply a spying organization, but there are others who think of it as a news organization. Under U.S. constitutional law, we don't really define the news media. So it seems to me that WikiLeaks can certainly make the case that they are acting as a news organization. But even if they are, if they have violated other laws, simply because they're a news organization does not make them immune from either their civil suit or prosecution. The DNC is not alleging that WikiLeaks was involved in this hacking. The DNC is simply making political accusations against WikiLeaks, claiming that by publishing these materials, it wanted Trump to win. That is not a crime. And you cannot try someone in court for publishing documents because the New York Times, the Washington Post, they have all for decades published leak and even stolen documents. The Pentagon Papers, one of the most important leaks in modern history, were stolen and then they were published by multiple major media outlets and the U.S. Supreme Court confirmed that this was entirely legal. This would have a major chilling impact on journalism as a whole were WikiLeaks to be held liable criminally for publishing documents that may have allegedly been stolen. Fears for the future of American journalism have grown de rigueur ever since the arrival of Donald Trump in the White House. But for all the president's bluster, all those tweets about fake news, his accusations of political bias and agenda-laden coverage, the Trump administration has yet to launch a legal case like this one. It's the Democrats that have taken aim at an offshore target, WikiLeaks, through a lawsuit that could one day prove to have implications for news outlets much closer to home. I don't see the Democrats going after the press. I see the Democrats as being allied with the press in trying to expose the attack that Donald Trump is leveling both on the press and on the fundamental aspects of American democracy. I would be concerned if they were going after a legitimate press organization's internal workings, but they're not. They're going after WikiLeaks, which is in the business of stealing. Many of those who dislike WikiLeaks, who consider it to be an extremely problematic organization, would say that this kind of lawsuit against them is perfectly acceptable and has no First Amendment ramifications. I disagree. I think a broad interpretation of the First Amendment would cover WikiLeaks. So I would hope that news organizations would focus not on WikiLeaks, but rather on the principles that are at stake. If this is a successful campaign against WikiLeaks, it would have ramifications for other news organizations. News organizations should be concerned about that aspect of the case.